Hi, this is Lily with the Help Your Sales podcast. And with me today, all the way from across the Atlantic, is David LZ. David, how amazing to have you here. And I'll go on and tell people about um, what you do. Um, but we met in Sedona when, we were, when I was learning the Sedona method. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you? I'm great. I'm I'm dealing with a little warmer weather here in the Chicago winter, so I just stepped outside and the 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 uh, temperature was just enough to be cool, but to have a smell or fragrance of a hint. It, it, I'm not being teased or tricked because it's still winter, <laughs> but I remember spring, so I have that kind of spring in my step. It's good yes. to be here, though. Good to see you again. Um and yeah, because you get it very cold there, don't you? We do, although the last couple of years hasn't have not been what they have been in the past. So none of this blustery, knock you over wind storm in the last couple of years. But uh, uh, it gets pretty cold. Yeah, I mean, I think everywhere the weather, you can't guarantee at any time what it's really going to do. We've got really mild temperatures for 10, 12 degrees just now. The snowdrops are out, the daffodils are coming out. So it's light at 7.30 a.m. So it's really nice. Anyway, let's get into the juicy, juicy, juicy Sedona method. Now, when I met you, you were, um, I can't remember your actual title, but you were one of the teachers. And my memory was of you doing that miming thing. <laughs> yeah. do, you still, do you still do that? I still use it in my teaching. Yeah. I mean, that, that principle, the, the mime of it is so, uh, so apropos because the intellect, one of the things I'm really conscious of is after teaching for 20 years and coaching for same, um, it becomes really clear that people can hear intellectual principles of spiritualism, but it doesn't necessarily, it's not transformative. It doesn't carry substance because uh, it's still only one part of our being, which is the mind or the brain or the intellect or logic. So logic can make sense, but it's not transformative on a spiritual level. So sometimes the visual cortex in the brain can be used and it moves it to a different sense of understanding. So for instance, if I were afraid of being on this podcast because I've never been on one before, and there would be a filter between me and doing it. In, in other words, between my full expression of freedom and doing that. So something between, and it would feel, it would look like this. It would seem very real, right? It's a filter. You don't understand. I haven't spoken in front of anybody and, and I'm probably not going to be very good. And that starts building this this filter between me and just being full out bleh, David, you know, having a good time with Lilia, my, my dear friend. But yeah. I wouldn't have the freedom to do that if I had this mental filter of this, ultimately, I just use these words because I believe in it, the cosmic energy that's turning the planets, which is also me pumping my blood, replicating trillions of cells while you look at me, that same intelligence is what I am. So for me to be fully the David expression of that, the less filters, the better. So this filter of I'm not probably going to be very good. And I remember when I was beaten up and when I was 17, and I started building this filter with memory. And then it becomes a filter between my joy and you. And, and my joy uh, firing up the joy in you or my ease firing up the ease in you. So because you're also life force of all of life in the form of Lilia. So when it sees itself, it goes, oh, I know that. That's me. So the more I can be unfiltered. So these things, and and I have a lot of compassion for them because after coaching for thousands of hours, it's really clear that this belief is very real. You don't understand. This happened to me, and I'm I'm people don't like me, and we believe this. But the issue is that we're the only ones holding it up. It and without it, it doesn't even really exist if we stop holding it up. So the investment yeah. of energy in holding up our belief system is what interests me. You know, bringing compassion, a little consciousness to the moment and go, yes, I am holding that up. That's like a breakthrough moment to go, oh, then I have the option to either let it go or see through, through the illusion of it. So I still use it or something that seems like it's pulling me, you know, mm -hmm. but there's really nothing here. <laughs> so yes, the answer is a long-winded yes. I still use it when needed. <laughs> well, you know, it stuck. It stuck with me because um, 
it, obviously I'm a very visual person so that really it was very clear and it was funny as well because it, you, I think it's really powerful when you realize that you're doing it to yourself <laughs> and it really you know you can't blame anyone else you've been making up the stories you've been creating the barriers and that's such a beautiful way to help people actually feel what it is that we do to ourselves. So tell me, are you still using the Sedona method? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's my foundation of the work. The, the thing that's changed as, a, as an instructor for me is uh, Lester started without a method, except love, you know, uh -huh. except his, his anger and his rage and his resentment towards childhood stories and events in his, in his life. And so he saw that he was an unloving and so what he did was he switched to love just when he was supposed to die by the doctor's edict um, in his apartment overlooking Central Park. He just decided, well, I'm still breathing, so there's a possibility of something. And he became his own laboratory and looked at his energy. You know all this story, but for your listeners, he, yes. he looked at all his pain and his emotional pain. And he realized he was carrying it and it was killing him with his second heart attack and half a dozen ulcers and, you know, et cetera. So he switched from the non-love to love for a moment with various people in his life. And the, the switch energetically felt different. So he followed his instinct, right? That's what scientists do. They follow a little clue that leads to this little clue. And he started to, as you know, square everything with love was his phrase. And as he did that, his body healed over three months and he ended up Free, absolutely unbound by any egoic sense of self. And he named that his unlimited beingness. And so uh, the Sedona method to me is a tool. There are seven ways of the Sedona method now. So I love them each because they're at different points of where we are in a moment. You know, yeah. they're di applicable differently. Um, but they all, what I started to say was I now think of myself as a, a presence exploring consciousness. So people come to me as a conscious coach. Um, mm -hmm. So consciousness and coaching or teaching or just being a representative on planet on the planet of remembering who we are is my actual title. So this, I mean, to me, it's the over title. The Sedona yeah. Method is one of the most integral tools that help us uncover or let go of what we're not so that we, what can be revealed is what we are. So I still believe in that methodology of uncovering what we've been believing to be which is false and revealing what is true which is our unbound loving present nature so the Sedona method is still my main tool the one thing I have added is uh, mindful breathing sacred breath pranayamic practices of yoga because I believe it steps beneath the mind to just the nervous systems and so I love including that now with the Sedona method very often Yes, I do that. I started doing that quite organically. You know, when I started teaching breath work, um, it was very obvious to me to add in the Sedona method um, of, you know, letting go and really being much more conscious and intentional about what you're doing with when you're breathing and getting yourself into these beautiful expanded states. So, yes, I think that's a very <laughs> natural. And, and I think that, um, the breath work really allows people without the mind getting involved to change their state change their chemistry and with the Sedona method on top of it you have a very powerful combination and yeah. you know I've, I've not been to I've not been out with Hale at all for years um uh, but I, I just connected with it was so funny with Martin, Maggie and Martin just the other day before I messaged you and um because I thought I need to get back out I need to you know see what these guys are doing now because I know I'll have evolved and um, moved and you know to this date, there's been nothing more powerful in my life than the Sedona method. It really transformed things for me. And it gave me, even more than any breath work or any amount of meditation that I've done, the Sedona method is the thing that set me. I mean, I'm still a work in progress, obviously. I wouldn't say I was completely free yet. I still get bogged down, but I can certainly maneuver things thanks to that method because it's just, it is just magical, absolutely magical. You know, the interesting thing for me is before I learned the Sedona method, I had a calling of of something. I was interested in some spiritual understanding of life. It was something that I couldn't figure out, but I knew there was something I wasn't seeing yet, but it felt present. Mm -hmm. I just call it presence, awareness, consciousness behind all things. Um, 
And then when I had emotionality, when I was 18 and I was at a party and I, I got in my car and just screamed and was hitting the car, hitting the steering wheel and expletives. And it, it scared me because I'd never expressed anger before, but it just poured out. And mm -hmm. um, for about 10 years, I had these explosions. And then I had somebody tell me about the Sedona method and it became my tool as well. And so for me, the reason I love it, and I, I'm on this in the same boat with you about its value in my life, is because it it's willing, I'm, I'm giving it volition, but it seems to be, it's a way that a person can, can be the person with all of this stuff and work on this stuff. That's an entrance point. And then there gets to be this point where the stuff doesn't feel as important as one's identity as being more peaceful or more calm or more present or more free. And that begins to smell better than the old kitchen, right? And eventually, um, one sees that the one who had all those problems was the illusory me. Um, in other words, it was compiled of all the history. But it wasn't a person because all the history was, but it didn't really make a person except by the mind's habit. And that person isn't who I am. And so the Sedona method then has ways to approach it from the sense of beingness rather than a me within the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I love the Sedona method because it has tools all the way into self-inquiry that aren't reestablishing a person in the process. It's not reinforcing that. So I love the breadth of the mm -hmm. Sedona method so much. Absolutely. I mean, I think you were there, I think, when I did the 90 and then level two coaching. And there was a, a young guy there who was a psychiatrist and he was very, he hadn't done the nine day. And I think a lot of the people that hadn't done the nine day that just came in for the coach level two were in a completely different vibrational space <laughs> from the rest of us who were in. I mean, Sedona is so goddamn beautiful as well. And we were in that river and, you know, obviously you're letting go for like 10, 12, 14 hours a day because you're hanging yeah. out with other people that are doing it and you, you just get this enormous space. And yeah. um, the people that came in after that were still kind of, it was so obvious to all of us that you're in your head. You know, that story, that's kind of all the learning, the learned behaviours. And because there's books written about it, so what? You know, because that's always it. So what? You know, because as we try to justify the story and, and you know, and solidify all of what we believe and perceive to be true. And I think I'm sure you've had the same experience as me over the last three years, watching people wanting control, security, approval, separation and oneness and behaving through that need for approval and the need for control. And, and I think when you're trained like we are, you've been doing it for a long time. That's all you can see, really. You're just like, mm -hmm. that's control. You know, Karen used to be great at that as well. She would say to me, you're in pride. <laughs> like, damn it, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem with having friends who can see it. It's like, oh, yeah. caught, caught again. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's a, I think, you know, we, I've, we've obviously seen the visual proof of how people start to look younger as you shed mm. uh, the layers of conditioning and beliefs. And it's, I mean, it is a physical thing, like Lester healed himself by going into that place. So, and it's such a, a valuable tool for being able to unpick and help people to see. Um, and I remember actually you did it with me that time you were over here. You kind of moved into the Byron Katie. Is that true? <laughs> when I was mm -hmm. wanting to stick to the story. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you were like, well, is it true? And then, you know, immediately you realize, oh, why am I? Yeah. Why am I saying it? Like, I think a classic one that we all do is we say, they always do that. They're, they always do. They always treat me like this. And then you're like, well, do they? Yeah, is always true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that question as well. I use that a lot. It's been very helpful for me, you know. Is that true, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that's been shifting for me in terms of my work is, um, I, you know, you work with people as you have uh, along the full spectrum. And there's, there's not even a beginning and end to a spectrum. It's just the spectrum of human experience. And what I've really begun to experience myself is the compassion for the human experience, because the belief in something 
is unconscious and and it, and it's entrained into the brain i mean we've developed you know neuro ruts neuro systems that and so until we wake up in consciousness to to being that which is more than the rut till we have that ability to witness to observe to see for a second that that's appearing true we're in it as if it's true and i have so much compassion because some trauma victims there's a there's a feeling of risk of giving it up because the amygdala and the limbic system and you know the, the brain has developed an identity that on a certain level is the most they can do because as a child they had to develop what they could just to survive like they had i have a client who had to had had various family members um one who was um committed and uh, mother and father who were very dysfunctional and explosive and unpredictable and and they she became the mother father of the family she kept the family in order and so her whole life she was carrying this idea that if i don't the whole house is going to explode with craziness so it was a survival mechanism that she was just she was in her 60s now in my work and she was pouring it into her real family her husband and kids and and they were like why are you what you're saying isn't true about us and but she was in this realm and so we had to walk so gently until she had to face that this family wasn't that family but it wasn't a cognitive it wasn't like can you see the logic of this she had to somehow move with the Sedona method through the emotional fears and because if she didn't the whole world would fall apart and it was real to her on a visceral level but what I'm I guess aiming towards and what I'm sharing is there is a component that I think that isn't Sedona method based which is just what love and compassion is and it's an actual element in the healing of in clients not that I heal but the spaciousness heals the the willingness to to accept without judgment um that is an actual component of what the conscious coach brings and so it's not just technical you know okay now let's use this technique now let's use it. it's actually who the coach is in their own consciousness that impacts the safety of the brain really basically being willing to put down its guard to to breathe and let a new nervous system begin to take over and so love and compassion for the the holding on that we're talking about is that true um, and and if by grace the person's ready to see that it's not true and it gives a pop open then that's a blessing it's, yeah. it just happened to be time for them to see it you know absolutely. absolutely but i'm in agreement that that's a great question is that actually true truly like stop don't move <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially exactly. is it especially is it true right now in this yeah, well, moment you know, our language is so powerful for what the information that's going through the body you know I've got friends that they're like oh it's a nightmare it's you know everything's very negative etc and you're like you need to stop you need to change that reframe that you know because that actual language is creating this contraction this is the way it is as if it cannot be any other way and therefore that's how it is for you <laughs> instead of going well actually let's you know what how could it get better you know what else is possible and the potentials in the field you know i was talking to a um a friend of mine she's just become a friend recently she's she went through the cancer journey and and she was well she i think the podcast was called um i was a critical overthinker <laughs> which i think you know for a lot of people when they get a cancer diagnosis obviously the mind comes in and that becomes actually the biggest torture and you know how she her coaching background really helped her to think right okay well that might be true but there's also lots of other possibilities and um, so understanding that you know the the nature of reality the very subjective nature of reality before anything like that would happen to you is, is always going to be helpful to help you navigate your way in a slightly different route from what you may be given by the medical system so it was interesting because for me that 
it's going into the feeling and letting go of the feeling that's the big change, whether it's, I mean, the Sedona method is my favourite, but I do use other ones as well. Um, EFT, you know, I use that quite a lot just to get the, the relief situation down quite quickly. But then the great thing about the Sedona method is that nobody needs to know you're doing it. Yeah. You know, and that's a really powerful thing when you just really start being very present in the body and being very aware if there's a kind of contraction in your heart or in your belly or anywhere, because it can come anywhere and you're like, oh, the cells are reacting or the programming is kicking in, you know, because usually it's functioning from the past. And then we take the past, of course, and project it into the future and we wonder why things don't change for us so it's um, becoming very body aware that's certainly what I learned one of the biggest things was I can feel now even if it's a confrontational not a, a negative confrontation but a confrontation that we, inevitably we have to have in life when we live with people and when we work with people and we're in community we have to try and clear the air and so I, th I think it's really helpful to be able to if you can feel anything in the body to just be welcome it and let it go <laughs> and it sounds so simple and that's obviously the thing that can often trip it up is because people cannot believe that it could be that simple feel it feel it welcome it let it go just over and over again mm -hmm. until the body starts to get the message <laughs> mm -hmm. that you're serious <laughs> Yeah, I think one reason people don't feel like it's that simple because we haven't learned or been trained for whatever reasons we won't go into right now, but trained to believe we're powerless or um, feeling powerless. I mean, a lot of people grew up powerless as children with a, you know, with adults in an unpredictable world, and the child is powerless. Um, so we begin to learn that. So to tell me that I can let it go, that doesn't compute because I'm not that strong. You know, it, the belief system is very strong that we're not unlimited beings. We're limited beings, limited humans, limited to our past. And like you said, the stories. So so it, it, it's in, I'm so intrigued lately by this understanding of the human being as a species, the human being beginning to recognize, you know, one of the things I learned is the word um, uh, mindfulness comes from a, a Northern Indian word, not Sanskrit, but an ancient language called Pali. And the word that was translated into mindfulness in Buddhism uh, was the word sati, S-A-T-I, sati. And it was translated as mindfulness, which is beautiful and translated as being fully present without judgment. But there's another way of translating it. And that word is in English, remembering. Sati means remembering. And I just love that because we forget our unlimited beingness. You know, the multiplication of the, the single cell, taking moms and dads' genes, putting it together, and multiplying, that's a miracle. That's that's a universe. That's a cosmos. That's a galaxy. You know. Yeah, totally. How do how do I have trillions and trillions of cells, multi cell organism, with consciousness about itself? So the waking up to consciousness about the self is actually the journey. Yes. And then the tool of the Sedona method by the simple fact. I remember for years. I've been teaching now since ninety six. So, whatever that is in 25 years or almost 30 years. And um, I remember have, calling a friend and saying, can you ask me the questions? Because I'm kind of stuck. And they'll ask me and I'll feel better. And I'll go, gosh, this stuff works. You know, and I've been <laughs> teaching for a long time. <laughs> and it, it's just an amazing thing to know that we have agency enough to help unhook things ourselves. Yes, uh, it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really getting inspired. When is the next Sedona Method course? Do you know? Yeah, um, Hale has one coming up in March, actually. Um, it's the advanced retreat, and it's in Sedona for the yeah. first time in a couple of years. I right. was going to go, but I have my own, I have a six-week signature course um, that I call the Awakened Life Approach, um, where I put all of my, all of my tools, uh, Sedona Method included, into one six-week course. 
and I'm prepping prepping for that. Otherwise, I really wanted to go. I'm looking at my calendar. That would be so joyful to be in Sedona again in that context. But that's the next one coming up. Right. Yes, yeah, Sedona is such a magical place to do these courses, but it's it is very far away from me. <laughs> yeah, of course. But maybe I'll maybe I'll look at next year. Get it. In well, the diary you, you can do it virtual. Oh, um, can you? Yeah, I'd yeah. rather much rather be there. <laughs> I know. But it's also, you know, maybe I'll look at that then. Yeah, March is quite busy for me, but I'll have a look. Um, I don't know how I've kind of fallen off his um, email list because I don't get the, um, you know, I don't get the workshops. Is he doing anything in Holland? No, he's not traveling. No. No. No, he's, he, uh, Hale is pretty well um, happy with Amy in uh, Bellingham, Washington, I think. Uh -huh. um, Enrica and Tim also moved there. So right. I don't know that they connect a lot, but mm -hmm. he's very happy. So, you know, he's doing, he's still creating content, but um, do and doing the things virtual. Mm -hmm. But I think he's opening up. He's going to do one also in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thinking about changing yeah. locations a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and is Martin teaching it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On Sundays, he does special events where he has in his offices. Yes, they have such a such a, a heavenly home, thatched roof. And, oh, do oh they? Gosh. Yeah. And he has a little separate office out in his in the back. Um, uh -huh. I, I love them. They're my brother and sister. Um, and uh, he has people because he has patients still. He's still treating people. Um, uh -huh. And he uses the Sedona method to help them with their health. So they come and he, I think he has 15, something like 12, 15 people or 20 on Sundays um, teaching. He teaches the Sedona method. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he obviously had, because he was a microscopist as well and a doctor, um, like a, a, you know, a, a GP, I don't know what you call it in Holland, but we would call it a GP or you call it an MD. So it gave it that level of, um, you know, credibility because he was a doctor saying, look, I can, and because he could see <laughs> in the microscope that, that it was having an impact on the flow. So that is such a powerful, powerful um, way to teach people. Again, it's that visual thing. It's like, that's you, you know, that's mm -hmm. the impact you're having on all your systems, your cardiovascular system, your vagus nerve you know, your skeletal system, your, it's all of it. Everything has been affected by whether you're in judgment or in fear or in acceptance. Yeah. And it's actually pretty simple at its most basic, but it's, the challenging thing is to stay out of judgment. <laughs> yeah. That's what I find. I thought I was quite unjudgmental until all this happened with COVID, and then I realised, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> We're so funny. We 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 judging. We're even judging ourselves, but in a good way. Like, no, I'm. It's pride, right? I'm. I'm. I'm beyond that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. You, Sorry, yeah, you go I, with your question. No, I was going to say, would you like to just talk people through a little release to give them a little taster? Because I know that you can do you can do one to one online sessions with people from anywhere in the world now, which is the fantastic thing that I really. You know, I think we are now understand that. And also your course, is it online, your course? You mean you mean the dates for it? Uh-huh. I have, I have an online course called the um, Freedom from the Prison of Self-Judgment, which okay. is a course you can purchase. And my website, um, which is just my name, .com, davidelzy.com, uh, has an events page in the navigation bar. And on that page, you see any courses that I offer. And one is a home course called Freedom from the Prison of Self-Judgment. And it was a live course that I've um, compiled into a course, a home course. Um, so that's online in the sense of a course you can purchase for yourself. Um, in terms of mm, my next course, it's all virtual for the moment. Uh -huh. So the six week course is coming up. Last week I did the um, Sedona Method, a three day intensive uh, immer mm -hmm. immersion course in the Sedona Method. Um, I'm still doing uh, the live uh, support calls, so uh -huh. uh, I'll do one probably in May-ish, 
May, June-ish, and then I'm trying to do four a year. So uh -huh. I just did one in February, or, or I forget, January. But so those are online. Um, and then I'll, and then I have other courses coming later in the year that I'm building and writing based on the Sedona method. I just did one two weeks ago called What's Love Got to Do With It, which is the yes. old <laughs> Tina Turner song. Yes. It's about letting go of non-love. And uh -huh. that was Sedona method based. So I still offer a lot. People getting on my mailing list is the best idea because I write things all the time about what's going on and also free videos and things to support people to let go. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, no, it does. I, I mean, I'll, obviously, I'll put all the links in the podcast for people to um, to find you. Um, I think the online courses are great now. I know a lot of people, the great, one of the great things I find about them is you can do it in your own time. Um, you know, because a lot of the time we're so, and I think, again, that's the gift that COVID gave us, where a lot of people were kind of forced to go online. Um, and now they realise it's a really good way to get this information out to the world. Um, mm. It allows people to to learn the Sedona method. Certainly when I started, I don't know how many years ago, must be kicking 20 anyway, um, it was, you know, you had to go to Sedona. That was the only place you could learn how to do it, unless you did mm. um, the release technique. But it was the same. It was all very much America-based. Yeah. So now it's really nice that, you know, people, I mean, I like doing in person best, but I think that the online is a very, very good second best and it lets you access teachers and information that well, quite literally 20 years ago you would never have been able to even afford. Or, you know, for people that have got young children and don't have babysitters or animals, um, you know, it's, it's just fantastic because there's really no excuse now, is there? You can always find a way to really learn the things that you're really drawn to. So mm -hmm. if any, I was just going to ask if you'd like to do just a little release to let people have a wee, um, you know, snapshot of what it is um, that you've got to offer. And then um, I'll put all the links for people that want to contact you or buy any of your courses. I'll put that in the bio. Mm, that sounds great. Sure. So whoever's listening. So who's ever, whoever's listening right now. Um, think of something that has triggered your attention. In other words, it's something that you're holding in mind that's not letting you be as at peace as you would like to be. So it could be a spousal relationship or something about your body or the world or a friend or a child, teenager. I'm sure teenagers never stir up any emotions, so probably not them. So <laughs> whoever it is, that or a situation, it could be a physical condition or an illness. Whatever is one topic that's holding your attention right now, that's not letting you be as at peace as you would like to be, just think of that for a moment and check in. Inside yourself, is there an emotion that comes with that thought, bringing that topic up to the consciousness? Is there an emotion? Is it sadness? Is it anger? Is it frustration? I'm just naming a plethora of feelings. So you choose, what is that feeling? And even if you can't find a name, you just feel it in your stomach or your chest or throat. Just be aware of that for a moment. And can you welcome or at least acknowledge that the feeling is here? You don't have to welcome like, hey, I'm so glad you're here. It's just a matter of acknowledging, being honest. Can you acknowledge or allow or welcome that the emotion's here? This is one of a few questions. The second question is, is that feeling bringing you a sense of peace? It's kind of rhetorical because logically it isn't, but I need to ask you so you become conscious. Is it bringing you a sense of peace? Is that feeling or that emotion actually bringing you what you're looking for? Is it getting you what you want? Is it working? So would you be open to or interested in allowing that emotion to relax a little bit or soften? Would you be open to that for your sake? This is about your peace, nobody else's, and nobody else's behavior. This is about you coming home to yourself. And the next question is, would you consider 
allowing that feeling or emotion in this moment, in the present moment, to relax a little bit more. And let it go just a little bit more, just for now. And if you are open to it and you'd consider it, when would you allow it to soften and relax or release? Next week, you can hold on to it in more pain. Next year, 10 years from now, when they change, or is your freedom of interest to you to let it go for this moment now? And if there's any remaining, Saving some for a rainy day, wanting to hold on to being right. Is that bringing you peace? And if not, just for this moment, could you let that go too? And then the little bit underneath the bed or in the closet where you're holding it for later, the hidden parts. Yes, I'll say yes to David, but I'm not giving this up. That is that bringing you peace? Or would you be interested in this lifetime, learning that you have the freedom to find peace yourself? You are a being that has the right to know peace right now. But nobody else is going to give it to you. It's yours for the having because it's your fundamental nature beneath all the stories. So just take a gentle breath in and out through the nose, very slow and loving. And just for now, can you rest, relax into your own beingness? The awareness in which all stories appear and disappear. That which you are. Good. Wonderful. Oh, that's so nice. I really needed that and didn't even realize. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful way to finish the podcast, David. And again, to reconnect us with, I mean, a lot yeah. of people that listen to me will have heard me banging on about the Sedona message, but to be honest, it's not something I've been teaching or sharing with people very much recently, just due to other commitments. So thank you for that beautiful reminder and that peace and bliss mm. that we can choose to appear into if we if we follow your beautiful voice <laughs> and guidance. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's funny, this thing, this this mic, this big thing here. Um, I finally decided after doing things with a little littler mic and little stuff, and and it's fine because your voice actually is perfect, just using what you're using. So it's usually fine but i feel like the heart can be heard and felt sometimes more um if you know if i invested in something that can hold more energy absolutely oh i appreciate absolutely. it but it's been yeah, my well, pleasure it's so lovely to see you after a number of you years. too you too and i'll be in touch and i will um share the link as soon as i get this all ready to go for you and thanks a million for your time it's lovely to see you my pleasure. My mom, who who is who is on the other side now, um, yeah. she would say hi to you too, Lilia. Yeah. So, and mine would say hi to you and to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll recover then. Yeah. Huge love. Ciao. Huge love. Take care.